Hey, welcome to another edition of the Motor Age Magazine how-to video series, The Trainer. Today's topic is all about servicing modern AC systems. These systems are doing a whole lot more with a whole lot less, and they're less tolerant of mistakes than ever before. So tag along as we look at how to service basic AC. The first step in the AC performance test is going to start taking place right when you go out to get the car to bring it into the shop. Uh, you want to make sure all the control functions are working properly on the control head, that when you change air selection, it's going to change on the dash panel to the defrost to the floor vents, and the floorboard speeds uh, are working properly, the temperature mode is working properly. Let's go ahead and run through those tests. And the first step you want to do is set the air conditioning for max cool. Max cooling is going to be when you have the air duct selected for the center vents. Temperature is set to maximum temperature, maximum cold. That the AC and recirc door is closed. And the blower is set to high speed. Now this isn't going to get cold right away. Give it a minute or two, but you should notice if it's getting colder. While you're checking the controls in the car, make sure that the vents will change when you select the proper control position on the control head. Defrost, floor and defrost, and floor on this particular model. Make sure that the air is indeed changing with the selection. Same with the temperature control. Move it from full hot to full cold make sure that that mode door is functioning properly. Also, when you operate the fresh air door, you should hear a change in tone as the research door opens and closes. If you didn't get the cooling that you expected to get inside the car, the next step is to come out under the hood and take a look. We want to make sure that the compressor is engaging, and if it's not, We've got some great resources for you at MotorAge.com. Uh, check out our April print feature, to spin or not to spin, and our low amp testing tips video for some really good techniques on quickly isolating why a compressor is not engaging. The next step, if the compressor is engaged, is to go old school. Find out where in the system hot and cold is. The low side of the system, or that side from the expansion device back through to the compressor, should be cool or cold to the touch. The high side of the system, all the rest should be warm or hot to the touch. If the compressor is engaged and it's just not blowing as cold as it should, the next step is to be to uh, hook up our machine to it and get some pressure readings. Before I hook up a machine that costs several thousand dollars, I want to make sure there's nothing in this car that's going to cause that, that damage to that system. And how we're going to start with is with a check for sealant in the system using this sealant detector kit. What this does is allow us to connect to the high side of the system and check for the presence of sealant. Hey, once you've identified that there's no sealant in the car, there's still one step you need to take before you connect that expensive RRR, that's Recovery Recycling Recharge Station, before you hook that expensive machine up to the car. And that's to make sure that the refrigerant that's in there is indeed the refrigerant that's supposed to be in there. Guys, there's a lot of different war stories out there, but there are documented cases where everything from R22 to butane and propane blends to some pretty dangerous stuff called R40 being found in automotive applications. You don't want any of that in the virgin supply in your, in your recharge station. So let's check that first with the identifier. The very first step of this particular model identifier is to calibrate the machine. We simply do that by leaving it exposed to the air and hitting the calibrate button and letting, letting it go. Okay, the calibration process only takes a few seconds, but once it's completed, now we can attach our service hose, and this can be based on the type of system that you're servicing, nine times out of ten, it's R134A. We're going to connect this to the back of the machine, and the other end of the hose is going to our low side pressure fitting. Once 
once we have it connected, we tell the machine what type of refrigerant system that we're testing, and we let it perform its test. Again, this will take about 30 seconds. Once the test is complete, you'll get the indications on the panel to tell you whether it's a pass or fail. In this case, it's a 100% R134A sample. I can go ahead and use this particular model's print function to print out the report so I can save it not only for my shop's records, but for my customer. Now, as a side note, there have been some issues with counterfeits in the United States. Odds are pretty good you will never ever see it. But the stuff that this refrigerant is contaminated with can cause some very serious problems. Make it a habit of not only testing the car, but the virgin tanks that you buy from your supplier. If they test anything but 100% pure 134A, it's time to take that tank back to your, back to your supply house. Now that we know the compressor is running, but it's just not cooling as much as it should, we're going to go ahead and hook up some pressure gauges, take a few measurements, see if we can get an idea of what the problem is. In order for those tests to be accurate, though, we have to do some recording of temperatures. The first is using a thermometer in front of the condenser to gauge the temperature in, uh, at that point. Now, if you've just brought the car in and it's been sitting in the sun all day, you've got to give it a little while to get used to the temperature inside the shop. That's going to make a difference in the temperature readings that you get at the duct, which is the next place we're going to stick this thermometer. Okay, now that I've got a temperature reading out by the condenser, the next place I'm going to stick the thermometer is in the center duct. Now I'm going to start the car and I'm going to let it run for about 5 or 10 minutes. Let the pressure stabilize at the reading on my machine and let the temperature stabilize here at the duct. These are going to be unnecessary points of information for me to use when I look up the service information specifications for what the pressures should be and what the temperature differential between the outside air and the cold air blowing from the ducts should be. When you're doing an AC performance test, sometimes you have to make sure whether the manufacturer specifies for you to have the doors and windows closed or open. It will make a difference in the final temperature readings you get. In this case, we're going to go ahead and do the performance test with the doors open. What this is going to do is really stress that AC system by getting that air conditioning system to try to cool all this warm air in the shop in addition to what's inside the car. Okay, now that we've verified that there's nothing bad in the system to mess up our equipment, we can actually hook up our RRR equipment, uh, our recovery equipment, to not only get some pressure readings on how the system is performing, um, but to, if necessary, evac and recharge it uh, as a process of repair. A couple of words real quick on current levels of RRR equipment. You may notice on this particular model that there's something conspicuous missing. There is no oil injection feature as part of this machine. That makes one of the requirements uh, for making this hybrid ready. Uh, hybrid ready machines have to make sure that there's no possible way that there can be any oil cross contamination from one car to the next. And if you're not sure what we're talking about that, check out our January features or even some of the features we have in our April issue related to hybrid oil. Uh, the short story, if you put PAG oil, the stuff that our 134A systems on gasoline engines use, and you stick that into a hybrid car, odds are pretty good that you're going to be spending a lot of money replacing the entire AC system in the car. It's just something you don't want to do. Uh, another thing you want to keep in mind is that newer systems, like I said in the beginning of the video, are uh, using a lot less refrigerant than cars that we used to use. I mean, when I grew up, it wasn't unusual to have three or four pounds of charge in a car. Today, like this particular one, it's just a little more than a pound. And with only maybe a 10% window, you're looking at maybe the spec on this car is less than an ounce, plus or minus, uh, in terms of its charge. Older machines just cannot charge to that type of tolerance. These new uh, machines that are certified to 2788 SAE standards are capable of recharging to within half an ounce of the specified charge on the machine. They also make sure they pull out about 95% of what's in the car to begin with. Guys, you, you know who you're talking to. If you ever worked on the system and you pulled it, all the refrigerant out of the car, you opened up the line and you heard it go you didn't get all the refrigerant out and you blew it to the atmosphere. Technically, that's a big no-no and can cost you a lot of money if you get caught. This machine makes sure that whatever you pull out of the car gets back into the machine. Okay, you've done your test, you've determined that there's a problem with the system that's going to require you to remove the existing refrigerant charge. 
you connect your machine up, you set it to go ahead and to evacuate. Here's a couple of quick tips for you. Depending on the system, it may take a while to coax that refrigerant out of the oil and get it all out of the system. Once the evacuation process is complete, watch the gauge and let it sit for a while. It should stay at or below zero. If it starts to rise above zero after sitting, that's the outgassing of the refrigerant causing the pressure buildup. You need to do the evacuation process again. Let it sit again for about five minutes and continue that process until your gauge reading stays at zero or below. Once you've got all the, all the refrigerant recovered, you can go ahead and begin your repair. Now that may be something as simple as replacing an O-ring or a major component. If you are replacing a major component, odds are pretty good you're gonna take some oil out with that. It's not like it used to be. You can't just dump half the oil quantity back into the car. A lot of these cars use very little oil to begin with. So you have to follow what's called an oil balancing procedure. And then you inject the proper amount using a tool like this one. Remember, too much oil is no good, too little oil is no good, Follow the oil balancing procedure in the service manual. Once your repair is complete, now it's time to put everything back together. Before you recharge it with refrigerant though, you have to do a good vacuum. And I'd say at least a good 30 minutes, if not longer. Why? Two reasons. You want to make sure that any moisture that might be in the system is removed before you refill it with refrigerant. And the second, you got to get the air out. If you just close the system up, there's air trapped in there you have to remove before you put that refrigerant in. If not, you're going to have higher than normal pressures, higher than normal heat loads in the compressor, and you're going to make the compressor life a lot shorter than it should be. All right, good job. We found the leak, we found the problem, we've got the system properly recovered and recharged. Now it's blowing cold like the way it should when it first came off the factory showroom. We're all done with this one, and that's going to do it for this edition of the trainer. See you next month.